And welcome everybody to another episode of the Animaniacast. Imagine me walking across campus in these. I'd be a footwear luminary. When he calls himself a luminary, he's only halfway done talking. And welcome everybody to another episode of everyone's favorite podcast, Looking at Luniversity. Uh huh. It's the spin off series of Talking Tiny Toons, which of course is the sister series of the Animaniacast, where we, you know, talk about all things in the Rugerverse, such as Animaniacs, Tiny Toon Adventures, Freakazoid, and Pinky of the Brain. But today we are looking and talking all about the seventh episode of Tiny Toons Luniversity. Revisiting our favorite jokes and cultural references. And of course, in the end, we're going to give this episode a water tower rating. I am Joey. And of course, joining me once again are my co hosts. There's my brother, Nathan. Nathan? Was that the guy that left school after the mysterious clock tower fire or the nervous pig? <laughs> uh, and across the country in Georgia, there's Kelly. Hi, y'all. <laughs> Yay. Yes, we're talking about the the seventh episode today. This is called General Hogspital. And uh, boy, if someone were to ask you about this episode, what what would you tell them, Nathan? If you had to describe it in just a a few words, what would you say, Nathan? All right, I would say uh, Patch Hamptons. Patch Patch Hamptons. Hamptons. (laughs) I thought you said Catch Hampton. No, No, Patch. 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 Hampton. <laughs> Very good. And Kelly, what about you? Um, the thing that popped into my head was it's the continuing saga of a quack that has gone to the dogs. Because <laughs> I watch Muppet Show too much, if, in case y'all didn't get that reference. That's right. And they did, did they call that General Hospital? No. Um, no, but I, what I, did they I call don't think that? so. Um, what was that called? Oh, boy. That, but I know what you're talking about. Did it have a name? Or, I, yeah. It, oh, Veterinarian. Veterinarian's Hospital. Yes. That's what it was called. <laughs> Veterinarian's Hospital. Yep. Uh, yeah. Rolf the dog and never. Mm-hmm. Boy, that was. Man. Nurse Janice. Oh, that was hilarious. Time once again for Veterinarian's Hospital. The continuing story of a quack who's gone to the dog. Well, Nurse Janice, who's the next patient? We'll see for yourself, Dr. Bob. <laughs> All right, take it easy. I'm okay. Quiet. This is a very dramatic moment. Oh, 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 Kermit, I shall nurse you back to health if it takes a lifetime. What do you think's wrong with him, Dr. Bob? Well, for one thing, he's been badly exposed to overacting. (laughs) Either that or overexposed to bad acting. (laughs) Oh, he's all right. He's all right. It just looks like he was under heavy sedation. Well, he was under heavy sedation. A 50-pound box of sleeping pills fell on his head. (laughs) It did not. Well, I know, but it's my only joke. (laughs) (sighs) Yeah, I just want to put... You know, just at work, just put on the Muppet Show and just have that play in the background. That's that's you know, we were talking before recording about all the different streamers and stuff like that. There's your reason to keep Disney Plus. It's just all the seasons of the Muppet Show, just stream, just binging that alone. There you go. That's that's worth your that's worth your price right there. Uh, well, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get into our uh, episode. It is uh, it was. Uh, what am I trying to say? I don't know. It's all about the pig stuff and and doctor stuff and DNA and well, let's get into it, I guess. Um Nathan, this date, this episode I should say, premiered on two different dates. This is this is so weird. It actually were premiered, I guess, on three different dates, sort of, didn't it? Because this episode premiered on HBO Max and uh, this the Cartoon Network app. Oh my gosh, at four different dates. So Cartoon Network app on September seventh. It was streamed 
on the max on September 8th. It aired on Cartoon Network on October 14th of 2023, but it also was shown at San Diego Comic-Con on July 21st of 2023. <sighs> There's too many dates, Nathan. Nathan, please give us the theme song for Looney Facts for whatever date this is from. Uh, there's too many days to talk about. Some say one is too many, but this is ridiculous, and so is this song. There's no melody and rhyme to be found, and it ends too abruptly. <laughs> very good. Wow, that is a good, that is a very extremely weird song. Thank you, Nathan. <laughs> uh, what, what, what facts do we have from one or more of these dates? One or more of these. So September 7th, um, that would have been the 97th birthday of Don Messick. He was an old voice of Hampton, which might be why they aired the episode on that day. It's a very, sure. <laughs> I, I mean, we can assume Cartoon Network didn't do it on accident. So, of course, they, they put it up there in honor of Don Messick because this episode heavily features Hampton. Um, <laughs> September 8th. Um, that is, um, I, I've tried to make some of these like relating to the episode a little bit. Um, 1946, the birth of the Turkish American biochemist Aziz Sankar, which we all know shared the Nobel Prize for his studies in DNA repair, which is kind of well. There you yeah. go. I mean, it's, I was like, that's pretty good. I, I didn't even know <laughs> DNA actually could be repaired. That's I didn't like, know DNA existed <laughs> until this episode. It, yeah, I that's was like, not oh, true. They made up a new thing. I true. thought it was only in DNA. dinos. <laughs> <laughs> Dino DNA. Um, and let's see. So uh, October fourteenth. Here's just a couple fun facts. This is the day it aired on Cartoon Network uh, uh, cable. Um, nineteen seventy eight was the first TV movie from a TV series, Rescue from Gilligan's Island, which is based <laughs> off the TV show Gilligan's Island. Um, there were some other movie releases. Pulp Fiction and Little Giants were both released in 1994 and White Christmas in 1954. Uh, 1977, Linda Ronstadt sang the national anthem, which was, she was criticized for dressing too casually, but it was also ranked one of the highest uh, national anthems or whatever uh, by, what was that? Uh, Washington Examiner as the second best <laughs> edition. Of, at a, ever at a sporting event. So it must have been a very good one. And then uh, July, I didn't do any for July. It's too many things. Um, yeah. Oh, well, we'll that... skip July. That one didn't count. <laughs> it didn't really count. You, if you if you were lucky enough to see it there, it was under, uh, you, you couldn't then, talk or record it anyway. That was the day you saw it. <laughs> that must have been, you know, not giving away too much about the today's episode, but I wonder how that felt to, to show this episode in front of a live crowd because um, to get that feedback uh, for it. And I wonder yeah, if the crowd... Yeah, all the laughs. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a couple <laughs> spots probably. There that is, would... but it's... Um, by the way, I just looked up Linda Ronstadt. I was very curious when you said Linda Ronstadt's casual like a uh, thing what she was wearing and she was wearing attire. yeah her casual attire was wearing a dodgers uh jacket and some jeans she looked very nice and i guess kind of casual but she looked like she was there to see a baseball game so too casual th- i know and then who cares <laughs> honestly especially today who oh. cares um oh just want to say barbenheimer came out on july 21st so there we go it was, uh, it was the release of barbenheimer Yes, the it's Barbenheimer the same thing. day as, and uh, like the actual day, 2023. So there we go. Like, all right. <laughs> well, <laughs> all those different things. Pick your favorite, folks. Well, let's go ahead and get into today's discussion of today's episode, I should say. And uh, let's go ahead and start with uh, General Hospital. Let's go. So General Hospital was written by Aaron Gibson. It was storyboarded by Andy Gonzalez and Megan Lands. It was directed by Andrew Dickman and uh, the Snipple Animation Studio. 
did the animation on this one. And for the most part, I think they did a very nice job. We'll talk about some weird parts that uh, may or may not be their fault, but we'll get into that later. Uh, Kelly, why don't you tell us what happens here in the first part of General Hospital? Okay. Buster and Hampton and Plucky are hanging out, and they all get their mail. And Plucky gets a magazine, and he is absolutely impressed with these Duckrum Three Webs shoes. And I guess they're sort of a parody of Vibram shoes. Um, they've got the little individual toes that you can wear, I guess. And um, so he's dying to have these shoes. And uh, Hampton gets a letter from a medical school. He had applied to Acme University and this medical school at the same time. And they didn't have any slots available at the medical school. So um, he was saying that somebody must have dropped out. And so he got their spot. (laughs) <laughs> I'm gonna be a doctor. It's the only decision I've ever been sure of. You're going to medical school. <laughs> oh, it'll be sad to leave my two best friends. I am everyone's best friend, but only in the sense that I am the best at being a friend, so. And Buster is really sad. Um, You know, it's like his best friend's gonna leave and he doesn't know what what he's gonna do and he goes to cry out his his eyes at babs and sweetie's room and uh talks to them about it and he starts wondering why acme doesn't have a medical school and he goes and talks to wiley coyote to get an explanation for it and as we've seen in cartoons before, the tombs don't really get injured. You know, they just kind of bounce back whenever an anvil drops on their head or whatever. So they don't need medical attention. They have loony DNA. And while loony he, DNA, no, I know. <laughs> I was about to get to that. Oh, sorry. So, so Wiley shows them this uh, video. It, it's like a video cassette. He wheels out the little TV like they used to way back in the olden days when you were in <laughs> elementary school and you knew that you were going to watch a movie and um, shows them this DNA video that, yes, is very much like Mr. DNA. Every tune has loony DNA. This DNA allows tunes to bounce back after being clumped, smacked, sproined, and doined. But a small percentage of tunes have damaged loony DNA. Don't worry. It's a very, very small percentage. And there's a dedicated team of tune doctors to help. So, Acme Lou doesn't have a medical school because so few tunes need medical attention. I guess that makes sense. I kept saying, die, no DNA in my head, <laughs> watching it and explaining about the, the loony DNA. But the video also reveals that there's an anti-loony DNA, and that would do something crazy to the tunes. Um, So he's like a mad scientist and and taking notes and really studying this video. And uh, But then Buster and everybody says goodbye to him, and Plucky decides that he's going to do a, what is it, a tune B&B? Or something kind of like an Airbnb, um, so to rent out Hampton's side of the room, so that Plucky yeah. But buy... instead of renting to air, you rent to tunes. So right, it's... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he wants to um, get the money to buy those shoes. And there and we so, are. Yep. So yeah, there's there's some uh, let's see what or is he uh, references cultural references. Uh, ooh, ooh. Uh, mm, I don't know. I really I wish mean, there was than, other than Dino DNA. They, see, you know what? Even that, it's it, like, yeah, we got it. We saw some stuff, but I don't even know if they. I think they could have been pushing that a lot more. You know, like yeah. have the DNA strand. Like, why not do a parody of Jurassic Park stuff? That would have been like that would have been better. <laughs> I think you know. I mean, some uh, of the. It, actions that the DNA goes through, I think, are taken straight from, right? Like getting like run over by a thing, you know, something like that. Like, 
right? Well, yeah, some and of the, they have like they have like a cut. They have like kind of a a, a, a uh, what am I trying to say? A line drawing of a road runner in it, I guess. Right? No, no. Mm-hmm. Wait, am I thinking of something that was in the Wiley e. Coyote's head? Maybe. Anyway, there was so there's and there's like a cut. There's like a kind of silhouette thing of a brontosaurus, I guess, and and the uh, Jurassic yeah, Park they, one. Yeah, they could have done it a little more heavily handed, but it was definitely an homage, which I enjoy. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, they could have done more. I wanted more, more, more. <laughs> <laughs> Never more. enough. More. Uh, they, I mean, yeah, just call it Looney DNA. Like put, like pump it up, get that parody thing going. But uh, whatever. Uh, so it was close enough. Um, and it kind of reminded me a little bit of Dip, a little bit. Yeah, uh, Nathan, you could for putting this down. Uh, instead of turpentine, acetone, and benzene, as they say in uh, Roger Rabbit, it's acetone, turpentine, and half a pinto bean. Yeah, so, but they, they pronounce it uh, acetone. I acalune? think because... Asalone would sound too much like a. <laughs> oh, sounds that's like true. but you know. <laughs> so I think like oh, just say acalone. Acalone. But in the subtitles, it's spelled like acetone. You know. Yeah, acetone. acetone. I think they just yeah acalone. I think they. I think the guy who read that line just didn't uh, read it correctly. <laughs> I don't think he got it because when you look at it as a c e looney, yeah, it looks like acalone. Well, you but, think also they should have just done like. Acetune or something. Acet, yeah, acet, acetune. Yeah, they could have done that. Tum- <laughs> and then tumpentine. You know, but they had to put Looney Tune in the thing. Yeah. So I guess it makes sense to call it Acetune or Acatune, Acatune, <laughs> whatever. Okay, uh, but that's pretty much it. Um, there's some interesting uh, there's things. The title. The whole title. Well, is the whole General Hospital. That's true. Is it? Is, is I don't even think it's still on the air anymore. <laughs> is General Hospital so. still on the air? Um, I think it is. All right, googling that. I think there's only. I know Days of Our Lives is still kicking. Well, it's it's not on the network though. I think you have oh, to have really? like the Peacock app um, to watch wow. Days of Our Lives. Wow. Okay. Oh, so really? let's see. General Hospital. It is still on. Yeah. According to soaps.com, there's because I there they have general hospital spoilers. Did you know did you know that um uh there's a spoilers for about listeners Olivia who is <laughs> Olivia Jerome? Is she really oh. dead? Mm. What does it say about Days of Our Lives? Uh Days of Our Lives. Hang on. <laughs> We're gonna change the podcast to Days of soaps. Our Lives. Spoilers. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna say Days of Our Lives spoilers. Uh, oh, there's no, there's no uh, headlines that I can do. Okay, um, uh, there's somebody in a hospital, and there's a fire, mm-hmm. and uh, there's somebody is Xander being wrongfully accused of Harris's attack. Oh, I don't even even know who Xander is. Neither do I. E- <laughs> and EJ and Tate are on the both on the verge of losing everything. I kind of know who EJ is. Okay, <laughs> I do see I do see a thumbnail of John. He's still on the show, I guess. John, John Black, Mar- John Black, John and Marlena. I think are still doing. Oh stuff Oh my that goodness! Show. Goodness gracious! So, yeah, I always loved watching John on the on the in the nineties version because he always did these long takes, <laughs> uh, and they would always zoom. He'd always like, "What do you think about that, John?" And he always have this like worried, concerned look. I was about yes. He always had the same expression. <laughs> Over the top, like hmm, he's never brow. happy. I've no, never he's seen always him happy. No, furrowed brow, always like, uh-huh. oh, let me think. And they would just do this slow <laughs> zoom in on his face. You know exactly when it was going to go to commercial break or cut to the next scene. You and, uh, are and, not wrong. I know. And it, because you never, it was funny because you never, you just kind of think like if this was really happening in real life and you ask somebody a question, what, what do you think about this? And they would just look like, mm, and not say anything for like 20 seconds. You'd be like, are, are you, are you okay? What's going on? Uh, I remember my dad used to go into work like late afternoon. So he'd eat lunch while I was watching days of our lives. And so it was when Carly was buried alive. Oh yeah. And after, after about a week or two, he, he starts, he was really getting into it. He's like, 
how does her makeup still look really good when she's been in that coffin for like three weeks now? And I don't understand. And like, he get really into it. Like, how long is she going to be there? You know, like, <laughs> it was really ridiculous. I remember, um, at the university of Arizona around when, when days of our lives came on in the afternoon, there would be people at the student union all watching it together. Mm-hmm. Like this whole area would fill up. It was like this communal, <laughs> It was really cool to to do. I don't I don't think anybody does that anymore. Uh, watch Days of Our Lives. No, no, number one, watch so. Days of Our Lives. But number two, watch a drama like that, um, especially in a communal setting like that, where everyone's kind of looking at these, uh, you know, fourteen inch TVs on the yeah. top of the ceiling, and everyone's just kind of watching it uh, in this one room. It was a uh, it was a neat time back in the late 90s early 2000s when you could do that oh well mm-hmm. now it's on peacock so <laughs> now 20 people watch it or nbc uh, i don't know i don't know how i i haven't watched it in years really but i it's always fun to kind of sort of keep up with the storyline that's true i always like because i feel like they're and, old family members right I, you know, yeah. like, what's going on with john and marlena <laughs> how john and marlena been uh, is is Bo back from the dead? I don't oh, know. Oh, Bo's like never coming back. I don't think Bo's ever. He's, I thought he's, he came back. I don't no, know. I don't think so. My mom would know. She loved. How many Bo times and... has Hope died? I mean, the only reason that Stefano is like actually really, really dead is because the actor actually died. Exactly. Yeah. And then he because he re- came back like a bajillion times. That's oh, by why they called him the Phoenix. Right. And they he died. Went to another soap opera and then came back when his contract he renewed his contract on days of our lives and was back as stefano again so uh, much fun and, yeah anyway well other than that uh you know connection right there what were some things that you uh liked in this uh though uh nathan what did you see anything in this first act that you thought was interesting um I, I saw someone point out on Wikipedia, which someone actually put stuff on Wikipedia for this Whoa. episode. I was like, oh my Good God. Good job. Um, there's like this weird animation error with Plucky's beak passing, like, says he's talking in front of Hampton at the beginning of the episode. Uh-huh. It just kind of like, it's away from Hampton's face, like over his beak. It's a weird, like, it's it's kind of not subtle, la- but also not layered like, correctly like, or something. Through? Yeah, it's just a weird, like, layer. Mm. His his face just covers up Hampton's. There's like this invisible shield around his face that. You know. <laughs> um, uh, I thought it yeah. was interesting. I thought it was interesting that like Buster is really upset about Hampton leaving, mm-hmm. um, and just the fact that we haven't really seen in these episodes Buster and Hampton really having much of a friendship. <laughs> Right, uh, you know, like it hasn't really focused on them as characters. Like, what do they do? It's, they always have like a problem to solve. They never have episodes where they're just learning about each other necessarily. I mean, they did. I guess that pizza one was the most. But even learned. that was just more like the Plucky and Buster getting becoming Plucky friends. and Buster, and yeah. Hampton was just kind of in the background. Right, Plucky. It's Plucky and Buster and Sweetie and Babs. And mm-hmm. Hampton's kind of pops in every now and then and goes, oh, you people are silly. And, and but there's he not probably much. just really was upset that he didn't know the Wi-Fi password. What will I do? Hampton's so sweet, so kind, so not plucky. He's also the only one who has the Wi-Fi password memorized. <laughs> I, I just... I don't know. I, I thought it was a li- that was a little odd for me watching uh, Buster freak out that much because uh, I felt that was a little confusing. And I almost got to the point where I'm like, does Buster like 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 Hampton? Like it was getting to the point where I was actually going because he was very yeah, torn I mean, up. It, it, they, uh, I think they try to make it seem like a mother and child kind of relationship or something okay. for a lot of the text is kind of like, you know. Uh, right when you get home, you know, and stuff like that. It felt more like a parent. Okay. Yeah, some of that did feel I'm like I'm going to make you a scarf or something and, you know. Yeah, okay. So I think okay. it's more. So maybe it's just yeah. like as a mentor because he feels like he's taught Hampton how to be funny and Hampton's finally coming yeah, into his true. own of Hampton, being funny. And Hampton did have, have some growth in his looniness. 
Yeah, so he's he did finally showing prowess in his in his things, and I think Buster feels like that's partially because of him as you know as a mentor. And, and I did like that scene where he jumps up, he goes up into the sky at a rocket and talks to the sun, falls down. I thought that was kind of cool. I thought that looked cool. It's gonna be hot though. Ninety, it was in the nineties <laughs> all week. Oof. Well. Yeah. You know, it's good for swimming. Good they for swimming. To go swimming. Yeah, exactly. That's what they wanted to know. So it's good for swimming. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, it was so I I was a little concerned with like the the growth that Hampton had in some ways because Hampton's. I hope they don't make his character too loony. I think they are going to make him somewhat loony, but I still like Hampton as the sweet kind of character that isn't isn't too wacky. Like you know, yeah, he's kind of a straight man. I don't want I don't want Hampton flying up to the sun every episode and talking and doing crazy you know takes and stuff like that. Um, it's okay in this episode to show growth, but I hope it's not a a, a thing that goes on more than once. Speaking of things that, that goes on in the ep- future episodes, I had mentioned that Elmira is coming up in one of the future future episodes, like last in our last review. Mm-hmm. And I think it was Malik on Facebook said, uh, I've watched the whole season. <laughs> There's no Elmira in this one. And I was like, no. You didn't watch hard enough. Well, I know that Cree know. Summer comes in here as Elmira at some point, I believe. <laughs> Must have been moved to the second season, um, I guess. Because I know that I think that she announced it or confirmed it online. I don't know. Oh, so weird. Yeah, but uh, Elmira is apparently not in this season. Which is kind of a bummer. You anyway, lied. <laughs> they lied. She lied to us. Lied this, to has, us. this has gotten renewed for a second season, right? Yeah, they're already uh, working or finishing up on it. I would think the second season comes out in the fall. Oh, okay. I would, if I'm a betting man. Hopefully, we'll be done by the first season by then. So. <laughs> yeah, I would hope so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Kelly, is there anything else in this first segment that you thought you said uh, that looks good, or have we mentioned pretty much everything? Oh, I think you mentioned everything. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get to the second part then. Nathan, what happens in part two? Oh, boy. Okay. So Hampton's off in his little, you know, medical school. And uh, Lucky is trying to get this room all set up, you know. He's uh, getting the bed all made and he's getting all these perfume stuff. I don't know, aerators. uh, But Buster's looking super depressed. He's not even dressed. He's like a toothpaste all over his face so uh like he dresses him up because the best is coming soon buster's like writing a sad letter now it's like all colonial period time or civil war Uh, i think civil war dearest hampton a decision was set forth in front of you and as much as i respect the bravery it took to go i must admit as every minute passes i hope it nears us to cross paths once again yours buster but Plucky's like, oh, here's the guest. And it turns out to be this uh, this pig comes in. A warthog. Um, I think a warthog. A warthog. Looks like Pumbaa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Pumbaa the warthog comes in and <laughs> puts mud everywhere and sings, uh, tells them uh, Akuna Matata and goes to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, Plucky has some other guests later, some bats. You know, it's, it's a whole struggle. Um, so... He's struggling with that. Buster's like, that's it. I'm going to go try to get Hampton back. So he goes to see Granny. And Granny's like, he's like, Granny, we need a medical school because I'm all injured. Look at me. I am wrapped in bandages. Granny doesn't believe him. Throws it like a, a weight at him. And he tries to catch it. You know, obviously he wouldn't be able to catch it if he's injured. And he does. So she knows he's faking it. And she uh, tells him that it's going to be OK. That, you know. She also has friends that are far away or something. So that makes Buster feel better, I guess. Like, kind of like, whatever. <laughs> that people uh, leave you. Yeah. Get He's over like, oh, it, kid. Okay. If Acme had a medical school, he could study here to be a doctor. It's hard to have a friend leave. I was sad when Mildred left the biker club because she got arrested <clears throat> by the piercing gaze of a handsome platypus. Yeah, that sounds right. Okay, I guess you're right. <laughs> Like, I don't know. Um, so uh, let's talk about some of the things that are happening at the school of Hampton because I, I kind of skip instead of skipping back and forth. Yeah, just uh, talk about one, <laughs> one at a time. Let's not cut back and forth. Um, so Hampton is at the school 
And he's like all giggly, like, oh, boy, I'm so excited. And uh, the teacher comes in is like, no laughing. And all the other kids are like, yeah, no laughing. And, and by kids, it's like one younger person. And the yeah, rest I guess of the people like, are really old. Their 40s, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> 50s, 50s, 60s. Wait, 40s is not old. <laughs> <laughs> For a ring or a kid. They were, um, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, they, all these uh, older folks, they don't laugh. They don't find things funny. The teacher, you know, sits on a whoopee cushion. Hampton's the only one that laughs. Um, he has to even grab his own ha-has and put them back in his mouth or something. <laughs> Who did this? <laughs> That's how we introduce ourselves at uh, 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 Acme Lou. This is not Acme Lou. This is a serious school with serious subjects and serious students. Looking forward to getting to serious work. <laughs> but when they bring in the first uh, demo, uh, Hampton's like, oh yeah, we can learn how to cure... Um, the, when your anti loony uh, DNA is there or something, and t- the teacher's like, "No, we don't cure. We only treat. If we cured people, we'd be out of a job." Um, just like the conspiracy so, people who talk about that's why they'll never pharma. cure cancer and yeah. Yeah. yeah, diabetes. Yeah, you can't cure it. Yeah, silly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So he's he's like, yeah, but I don't think it's a uh, it's silly. I think we should cure it. But like, you sound like that uh, wit that doctor witch Hazel. She thinks we should cure things too. And he's like, oh. So he's um after schools after class, he's like, oh, I go find doctor witch Hazel, and she's laughing in her this room, and she tells him the secrets uh to healing. She thinks is laughter. I believe. The cure to all tune ailments is laughter. <laughs> the building block of loony DNA. If I could only test it, I'm sure it would work. But if I tell my boring colleagues, I'd be out of a job. <laughs> and uh, we'll cut to uh, Wiley Coyote is at Acme School, and he's um he's trying to build a his thing and he's putting all the things and it all and it all comes together and he's like ha and he holds up a sign and and we'll we'll say that's pretty much everything in act two there so yeah so wily coyote's doing evil yeah he's, things. he's made he's he's got his um acatone acaloony stuff <laughs> or yeah yeah all right well uh let's see uh mm, references references uh I let's see. Uh, hmm. Yeah, Pumba, sort of. I wish yep, they did. I, w- I wish he said something like Hakuna Matata. That would have been funny. But yeah, something that says like I would just, have laughed at that. Yeah. See, something that says like sounds like you know rhymes with Hakuna Matata, or you know, like I don't know. Or he instead did. of that little plushy, like um, he looks like he had like a plushy duck or something. Maybe if it'd been a um, meerkat. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Hold a little meerkat. Or oh, that would have been good too. Again, <laughs> we're we're available for uh, script punch ups <laughs> season two of Luniversity. <laughs> just saying. Uh, it's like you know, just 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 pump shit up there, there, here, or there. Anyway, um, let's see. And Nathan, you wrote down that Hampton says curing a tune sounds like carrying a tune. I forgot that part of the. The whole thing is, he where, does where, say, where's this? He says, well, he's like, I don't think that curing a tune is a silly thing, but I just think that curing a tune sounds like carrying a tune. So, oh, okay. Like if you're so, singing. Is it a, <laughs> so it's kind of like a pun? Maybe, thing? but I don't think it's even supposed to be. I think No, it's just, I don't think so either. <laughs> We're looking for jokes that aren't even there. I'm just right trying there. to find <laughs> stuff. I'm like, there's not a lot Was that a this. joke? Was that a joke? Is no, that something? Is that it? No. no. Okay. <laughs> uh, I will say that the animation um, did remind me of Ren and Stimpy a little bit in this second part, uh, with the doctor yelling at Hampton. Uh, he he, his eyes bulge and his you know his veins pop out of his neck and everything. So it looked very Ren and Stimpy ish to me. 
And of course there's like, you know, and then they show Hampton has shrunk to this on his chair. And it, I don't know, just the, the reactions of that reminded me of a Ren and Stimpy kind of cartoon. And there, of course there's all the, you know, there's not as many meme takes in this episode and uh, there's in the first one or two episodes, but there's still a few of them throughout the, you know, the weird grinning takes that they have mm-hmm. uh, from time to time. The weird when meme-ish. Yeah. I guess it's in act three, but Plucky's like in the corner of this weird face. Uh, waiting yeah. For his guest. And there's like, and Buster has some weird grinning kind of over exaggerated grins and everything thing from time to time that they'll, they'll throw in which are not that distracting but i mean it, that's your major reference point is doesn't this look like a meme maybe that's what they were trying to go for are they trying to go for like they wanted people to screenshot this and make these things memes i don't know what why would cuz it's not necessarily that funny but maybe they're trying to do kind of a internet viral thing maybe they were i don't know I don't know. I also don't know why this episode was rated TV PG. Um, I, cause nothing in this really felt at all PG to me. Well, I was about to bring up under unre- unrelated to that, but now that you bring it up, I think maybe this might be why, but I thought they were really sort of playing up the bromance between, um, Hampton and Buster. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I, not to the point that you'd need any kind of ratings issue. I mean, it, it's all very, mm. It could Innocent, be a, a, really, but... a violence thing. There's they show a lot. They everyone's getting hurt in the, the end. Yes, maybe. <laughs> but that, I mean, I if know. we're put, if we're making things TV PG just for people being squashed, and uh, they're going to talk more about it later. But squash and stretch, they mentioned that a lot. I thought that was cool uh, reference. I might as well talk about it now because I can't talk about anything else reference wise. But they're going to mention squat. I lost my squash and my squash and stretch, and that's a term that they use a lot in animation. Uh, you know, so that was cool, but uh, is there anything either one of you can think about that uh, is in act two that uh, I should mention that was neat or cool or interesting? Um, the, the, the witch, uh, Dr. Witch Hazel, she's a witch doctor. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's a good point. So there you that's- go. She's a I wish, and there was a bunch of letters on her name. I wish I took the time to figure out what her, because uh, let me rewind this here real quick. Here. Rewind it, because I, I saw. At the window, there was a bunch of things like on the window. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna get to the window. He's right. <laughs> okay, this is exciting. Now this is podcasting. Uh, <laughs> I got that reference. Okay. <laughs> Oh, okay. So, we were doctor. I mean, that that was actually really funny. Because <laughs> yeah, I like how it has pot in it. <laughs> uh, doctor Witch Hazel is an OMD, ENT, and doula. Okay. Yeah, she's a doula. Oriental medical doctor, ear, nose, and throat doctor. So there we are, and a doula. Mm-hmm. Doula. Oh, there. Um, so that's cool. she does all those things. Uh, I oh, did... and laughter is the best medicine is a is a common phrase that that's they... true. Her voice was pitched very annoyingly high, in my mm-hmm. opinion. <laughs> I did not like the the pitching of her uh, voice. It didn't because uh, I'm Candy Milo, I believe, does the voice of Granny and of Witch Hazel, and June Foray, of course, did both. And I don't. I don't think they really changed the – when I think of Witch Hazel, what she sounds like and what Granny sounds like, they pretty much sound the same. But I think they pitched Witch Hazel a little too much just to have more of a contrast between the two voices a lot because they're in two scenes back to back. And it, to me, it just sounded a little too – as Randy Jackson would say, a little pitchy dog, you know? <laughs> then didn't wasn't wasn't a wasn't a fan, uh, but okay. Well, let's go ahead and wrap it up. Nathan, why don't you tell us what happens in here in the third act? I already here. did act two. Wait, we just did act two. <laughs> That's, that means I gotta talk about it. Oh no! <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about act three then. Okay. Uh, here we go. So Roadrunner is being chased around by Wiley e. Coyote, 
And Wile E. Coyote chases them to the top of the Looney University water tower and kicks off the ladder so Roadrunner can't escape. This is like classic. Like he is just going all in. He's going to eat this Roadrunner. He's gone back to his old ways. This is horrible. Well, the Roadrunner uh, is standing there. Wiley Coyote takes out his secret formula to uh, apparently kill <laughs> the Roadrunner once and for all. Uh, but then the Roadrunner shows that he has painted a black hole underneath Wiley Coyote. So Wiley Coyote falls into the water tower, spilling all this chemical into the water tower, within, which then drains into the water main, which then goes into every tune's drinking water and bathtub water and just everything. And before you know it, every tune in Tiny Toons Luniversity has been hurt and is not able to get better because now their loony DNA has been damaged. None of these tunes are bouncing back from their usual gigs. We need a doctor! <gasps> ah, I need... We need Hampton! So he finds Hampton and explains the situation, convinces Hampton to return to Acme Lou. Meanwhile, Plucky finally has gotten enough money to buy his shoes. He deals with this... The last, the last animal that he has... You know, there's bats. There was bats at one point. Uh, but the last one is like this elk. And I thought the elk's name was very interesting. It's Gustav von Aardvarkberg. Dude, you've been the best host I've ever... Uh, so why this... Uh, this is not an aardvark. <laughs> I don't know why it's called aardvarkberg. But it was a cool little sounding voice, a uh, German little elk thing, and gets kicked out. Anyway, uh, he has enough money for the shoes. And back at Acme Lou, Hampton makes this little potion and tries to use it on Babs, who's been squished by an anvil. They were bashing it around like a like a bean bag and, uh, until Babs got hurt. And initially, it does not work. Uh, it works just a little bit, but then it, it it just doesn't have a lasting effect. The laughter that they try putting into the potion doesn't work. But then Plucky walks down the street with his wacky shoes, and that makes everybody laugh. <laughs> Innovation! Oh, oh yeah, stand there in your old-fashioned shoes, toes all disorganized and touching one another. And everyone's DNA is fixed, thanks to the potion and thanks to Plucky's funny shoes. Then Witch Hazel gets a job at Acme University as their resident, I don't know, medical teacher. <laughs> and... <laughs> Two people are having a class there. It is Hampton and Dizzy Devil. Maybe some other kids, but we don't see them. And uh, we end the episode with a very hilarious word. Dermatological electrolyte. Whee! And the end. Well, <laughs> uh, what were some things in this that you thought were interesting or funny? Because there's really not, I mean, we already talked about Patch Adams. I couldn't think of any other cultural references. Kelly, did you notice anything in this third act that was uh, of note? I thought, it, I did think it was kind of funny when Hampton said the only thing he'd learn in the week he'd been there was he could only button his lab coat correctly, but he actually <laughs> didn't. Yes, that so was, that was funny. funny. Nathan, what about you? Um, I was, uh, I, I like that people are, um, healthy again, but I got a little concerned by, uh, Granny's comment to Wiley Coyote about like, oh, we got to reacclimate you or the nemesis program or something. I'm like, what is that? Like kind of this throwaway line is kind of like ominous. And I'm wondering like, are they, are they all getting like brainwashed? To, These, me, like, to me, it sounded like it was, he had to go back to rehab for nemesis, uh, like counseling maybe, or something like that. I wonder if it's like, um, 
what, what is that movie like orange orange something <laughs> rockwork orange or something or, orange they're yeah. gonna pry wily coyote's eyeballs eyes open. open like and maybe that's like <laughs> why like sylvester is just like a postman now like all these people that used to be like villains are just like you know and then like Maybe Elmer Fudd's alive somewhere, but he's like putting secret messages and like videotapes <laughs> that like will deprogram the person and then like set them back to like, oh yeah, I can actually. So there's a lot of dark stuff going on in Acme Lou behind so, the scenes. Yeah, I think, I think Elmer, uh, I think why they got uh, Manchurian candidate or something and got <laughs> like set off. It so. finally broke. He yeah, they bro- broke free a little bit. Yeah, he broke. Yeah, he's his programming oh, or something. Like I don't know. Um, so the, I don't know. I, that was just it was just making sense line to me by Granny, and I'm like, okay, this opens up a whole world of things. So I don't know. We could dive wow. in that. But wow, wow, wow! He's like one of the few teachers that what used to be a villain because a lot of them, like Yosemite, is just like the security guard. You know, that's true. I never thought. Yeah, um, all these all these Tasmanian is, is a teacher, but he no, he got fired too. Who got the Tasmanian devil? He was the wasn't he That's working right. at the newspaper, right? And he never got his job back, even. And he works at the. Lubru. I guess he also is. He works at the Lubru. So, yeah, he's not a teacher. So the only teacher was like Wiley Coyote, and now Witch Hazel is the uh, the only villain teachers that I can think of. Hmm. 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 Well, so I think they get reprogrammed or something. <laughs> you know. You know what? There's some dark stuff going on behind the scenes, and we'll just have to find out in season two. Ooh, see, all these breadcrumbs they leave you, and if we don't see them fulfilled, we'll we're be gonna get very, answers. Oh, Elmira's gonna, gonna come out and tell us everything oh. later this season. <laughs> if we if we don't get the answer to these, we're gonna be so upset. Uh, okay. Uh, well, anyway, the, let's see. Any other things? I don't. I you did mention the mail scene again. I just thought for a second. I, that was one of the most unbelievable parts in the entire uh, episode. It was like, their kids are still getting mail at college? Like, <laughs> they're doing... Uh, I mean, I know it had to make sense for, like, you got a letter from this college. But to me, it's like, who gets magazines anymore? Uh, yeah, anyway. Uh, well, there's your episode uh, of Tiny Toon University. I, I, think, uh, I think we better get to our Water Tower rating. Okay, well, out of five water towers, how many would you give this episode of Tiny Toons Luniversity? Why don't you go first, Joey? Ooh, I'm going to go first. Okay, uh, <laughs> I'm going to go two. I'm going to say two because it was, I thought it was a little, I think it started off a little stronger um, than the previous ones that we've seen the last few, I think Erin Gibson, she did. I know she wrote the first episode that we saw, which so far has been my favorite. Um, so I liked how this one started. Uh, I just think it just kind of dragged a little bit and just, I don't know. The opportunities for jokes were there, but they weren't really picking them up. So it was fine, but eh, wasn't, wasn't great. But better than at least the last one or two episodes. What do you think you gave the last one or two episodes? What did I give the last? I thought it was like one point five or something. Was it was it low or is it two? Two. It was a two? Okay, fine. Yeah. Well that case in that case, Nathan, two point five. Ah, yay. It's a two point five for me. Okay. Um. Is it? That's for me. But Nathan, what about you? What do you think? You, yeah, I'm master- gonna go two and a half as well. I just didn't okay. think it was very funny necessarily um like it was a fine episode like i don't know i just was like i wasn't annoyed by any of it or anything like that it's just like i don't know uh i'll just say two and a half unless in a future episode they bring back this whole wily coyote thing and then i can be like oh this was like a five star you know they they (laughs) were like they knew what it was but i i don't think they will so (laughs) i don't think so Uh, kelly what about you I wish we could get paid every time we said the word fine, because that seems to be pretty much what we say about this. Um, I'm I'm going to be a little nicer. I'm going to give it a three because uh, dino DNA. Um, That's true. So I, to my eyes and ears, at least, it had a Spielbergian reference, even if you had to reach a little bit for it. But yeah. um, 
And uh, I'm, I mean, I thought the story was okay. It it just, as we said, there were moments that they could have made little changes that like, we personally would have found it funnier. I mean, yeah. maybe we're not the right people, um, target <laughs> audience or something, but um, I, I think... I think for an episode that is about laughter, really, um, and how it's the best medicine, it could have been funnier. I did find the one part, though, that I did find it funny when uh, Sweetie changed her face to Plucky and they just made a crack sound. Oh, that, that uh, actually was, it was that, well, it was that, cute. I, that was cute. It, made, it was kind of funny. <laughs> it was <laughs> unexpected, and it made me go, huh. Like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. It did make me go, like, ch- like chuckle slightly. Um, but that was a long way into the episode <laughs> for me to have a, a mild uh, amusement. So it kind of got lost for me. Well, there you go. So slightly uh, between the two. What is that? What's, what's the average on that, Nathan? 2.6 something, right? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. 2.67. Right. There we are. Thank you, Nathan, for the math. And <laughs> let's go ahead and get to our contact information. Uh, Kelly, where can people see you online and say hi? Um, I guess X still. Um, I don't <laughs> post much of anywhere right now. Um, but I, I, I do check Instagram sometimes, and I, I still check X. So Yoda Princess, Y O D A P R N C S S. All right, Nathan, what about you? Uh, oh yeah, I'm on X as well, all the time, always posting. Django <laughs> FT, that's me. And as for the animated guest, we're on Twitter, X, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, uh, sort of, <laughs> and other things. Uh, so check us out wherever we're, we're there, and of course we're on every podcast player. So feel free to subscribe and share with your friends uh, and family and loved ones. Uh, our, our fantastic podcast uh, and uh, well I, I, I can't think of anything else to say this is uh, th- these episodes of Tiny Toons University throw off my groove <laughs> I don't know what to say sometimes uh, we're a proud member of the Retro Zap podcast network so feel free to go over to RetroZap.com and check out all the fantastic stuff podcasts and articles every single day of the week Well, that'll do it for today's episode. So, for Nathan and Kelly, this is Joey saying good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. This podcast is not endorsed by Warner Brothers or Amblin Entertainment and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Animaniacs, Tiny Toon Adventures, Freakazoid, the Warner Brothers logo, all names, pictures, and sounds are registered trademarks and or copyrights of their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of the Animaniacast unless otherwise indicated.